you should be more holy, more sanctified, more like Christ today than you were not yesterday probably, but say six months or a year ago and certainly five years ago. In other words, if you're a Christian, you're progressively growing in holiness. Don't constantly look at yourself because then you never see like the little incremental growth, but on occasion look back and go, okay, look at I used to do that, now I don't. I'm not where I should be, but I'm not where I used to be. And please note this, if you have been persuaded, don't do any fruit counting. Don't worry about it because after all, you can be a carnal Christian. Dr. R.C. Sproul has some words for you. One of the great and ghastly errors, not just error, but heresies that permeates the evangelical world today is the doctrine of the carnal Christian. The doctrine of the carnal Christian was first uh, set forth in a theological framework that taught this, that at regeneration, the Holy Spirit can come in and save a person without changing the person at all. There had to be a second stage where uh, there was lordship introduced uh, on the throne of the soul where uh, for a person to be spirit-filled and so on and not be carnal. But the idea was that you could be a believer and be altogether carnal. Now, the Bible says we are carnal, we're, so we're sold unto sin, and as long as we're in this life, we still have a certain fleshiness that uh, accompanies our walk as Christians. But if you're 100 percent flesh, 100 percent carnal, you're 100 percent unconverted. <laughs> but this is an excuse for people to say, well, I answered the call, I raised my hand, I signed the card, made the pledge, therefore I'm saved, even though there is no evidence of it whatsoever. You can still be in a state of utter carnality and be a saved person. John MacArthur wrote the definitive work against yes, that. Thank goodness for that, John, that you stood up into that battle field, which was so vital, because otherwise you have multitudes of people going back to 1969 who are saying, Lord, Lord, who, and Jesus is going to say, please leave. I don't know who you are, you workers of lawlessness or iniquity. Because I, am I going too fast? There's no such thing as a totally carnal converted person. If you have been living carnally, persuaded of the lie that you can be both carnal and a Christian, let me use the law of God to change your thinking. The laws of God demand that you must be perfect in thought, word, and deed, which should cause you to recognize God does not put up with carnality. In your flesh, by yourself, that is all you are, a lawbreaker who cannot earn God's favor and he will not tolerate sin. And that leads us to the gospel, which says Jesus died for sinners. If you have been a carnal Christian, all you've really been is carnal. And if you would like to have your sins forgiven, then look to Jesus who will save you from your carnality. Repent and put your trust in him today.